So I'm on the couch with Nan Levy, who is the daughter of Shirley Baker, and I'm delighted to say the uh, foundation here in Bristol have recently acquired some Shirley Baker prints. So welcome. Thank you. Thank um, you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. Can you remember at all being brought up with Shirley when you were first aware that your mother was a photographer? I think I was always aware that she was a photographer because she was always in her darkroom. She had a darkroom in the loft and an office next door. And um, I remember um, her spending lots of time and I was allowed in if I was quiet and I sat on the floor in the dark and I was allowed to twiddle the chemicals and, um, and peg them up in the dark room. And every time we went into the village, I remember her having to make a stop um, to buy photographic magazines and to, to get colour work printed. So she, she printed black and white herself and her colour work she would experiment but was never, never quite sure. So she never really bought that equipment. And when you say the village, where, where was the village? The village was in Cheshire, in Wilmslow, Cheshire. So yeah. although she's best known for her pictures of Salford, she wasn't actually living in Salford at the same time. She was born in Salford and, um, and lived most of her life, I think, in South Manchester. So I was born in Wilmslow. And as well as seeing her dark room, did she ever take you out and actually go shooting with you? Or did she bring you out when, when she was shooting pictures? Oh yes, often. We'd, um, in the uh, school holidays, I remember being taken to air shows and orchid shows and traction engine rallies and car shows. Um, but not Salford? No, I was never taken to the street. I think I must have been either at home with the nanny, because in the early, a lot of her work was taken in the early 60s when I, when I was a baby. Um, so I'd have been left at home with a nanny while she went into town and went, as she, as I've, I've read actually subsequently that uh, she was, felt compelled to go back day after day to the streets to photograph. But at the same time, she was actually teaching photography, I assume, at the Salford College of Art and Design. I remember when I was at school, she would, um, she would be teaching. She was teaching at Salford, yeah. And then it would be during the weekend that she'd have a chance to go out and continue the shooting on the street? Um, in... Yes. And um, I think she was only teaching for a fairly short time. Do you feel? Years. Do you feel, therefore, that you actually didn't have a great childhood because your mother was constantly occupied in either in the darkroom or out shooting uh, um, pictures? My mum was um, an identical twin, so I think I had my mum and my other mummy, and um, what? And I think my mum used to take us out to shows and fates and fairs and to the beach, and then if I wanted to do things cooking and sewing and I'd be round at my aunt's. So I think I got a, a fair a fair upbringing. And can you remember her talking about uh, her being influenced by other photographers, say Cartier-Bresson and people like that, where obviously there's an empathy with the type of work that she does? Um, I know um, she has a huge collection of books, but I think whenever she tried to emulate another photographer, she has commented that it never worked. So she tended to do her own thing. Um, and I think she had her own style and set her own projects a lot of the time. And did she meet other photographers? I mean, uh, I, I was around in Manchester at the time that she was working. I've got a feeling I met her, but I can't actually remember. And it, it's very frustrating for me. But did she connect with other photographers, talk to them, share her pictures? Or was she pretty much working in isolation? I think she was working in isolation. I know in um, in... The very early days, in the, the, the late 50s or early 60s, there was an exhibition with nine photographers. But f beyond that, I think she was quite a loner. I think she, um, she tended to do things on her own. And when was the first time she actually had a proper show of, her, uh, of what has now become her best-known work, the Salford images on the street? Um, 
I'm sure there were earlier shows, but the one I most recall is was the one for the opening of the Lowry. And she was alive at that time. Absolutely, yeah. And um, she twinned with the painter, and they opened the Lowry together. And the Queen and Prince Philip came to visit. So I, that was, I definitely remember that one. And how old were you? But there were a number of um, street exhibitions in Manchester, but most of, um, and she's had other exhibitions on other subjects in northern towns, Huddersfield, Sheffield, um, Bradford, Salford, um, but sort of not, not a lot in London. Mm -hmm. And can you remember meeting the Queen, etc., when she when she came to Salford to open that show? Yes, I remember because we we weren't we weren't allowed to go, but uh, I remember seeing the photographs and recalling that uh, that the Queen didn't take her gloves off when they had lunch, <laughs> um, and that she was very interested and spent a lot of time talking to to her. And when these uh, pictures were shown at the Lowry, it must have been a lot of publicity. Did many of the people who were actually in the photographs, that the kids playing on the street, actually find themselves in the exhibition and come along and make oh, themselves known? Over the years, um, a few people have got in touch, yes. And she's always sent them a picture of themselves. There's one, one particular family um, approached uh, Mum and at, at the... A more recent exhibition at Manchester Art Gallery, I remember um, these ladies in their 60s coming to introduce themselves and saying, I'll never forget your mum because she, we didn't have a picture of our mum. And um, she posted a picture, one for each of the siblings, which was very sweet, with a letter. And she says, and I've still got it and it's still hanging on the wall in my kitchen. Very nice. So this is the book that um, Shirley published during her lifetime. Uh, can you remember working on this book uh, together and sharing what pictures were going to go in? No, no, she was a very private person. She did it all by herself. And the first thing um, I recall is sitting on the sofa like this. And um, she came downstairs from her dark room and plonked um, a book in my lap. And I think said nothing and waited to see how long it would take for me to twig. <laughs> that it was by Shirley Baker. And um, there was a little bit of uproar how outrageous it was that she'd written and published a book without me knowing. But, uh, uh, and did the same apply to your father as well? I think he knew that she was working on something, but wasn't quite sure. Uh, and um, her answer to that was, it's not a book until it's published. <laughs> I could have been working for a, very, for a number of years on it and it may never have got published. So, and I think a lot of the time she didn't feel that anybody was particularly interested in the things that she was interested in. So in her lifetime, do you think she gained the recognition that she deserved or, or would you say it's really come about since you've been working with the estate uh, since she died in 2014? I think she, um, I think she got her recognition in her lifetime. Um, she had a number of exhibitions. Um, Unfortunately, her first London solo exhibition wasn't until the year after she died. But she had spoken about it and she was planning meetings to discuss this, the exhibition, this one, Women and Children and Loitering Men. And um, before she passed, she asked me to work with the people that she'd been talking to and do as they say, make it happen, which we did. Um, and it was a very successful exhibition which toured from London to Madrid and then on to Manchester. Um, and how did she sustain herself? I mean, was she relying on uh, the teaching or, I mean, did, did, she, did she do any commercial work? Um, she did a little oh. commercial work. She did a few projects um, where companies approached her to do um to do work um either she, um, in the early days she did some work um for um a hospital um and i remember i remember her delivering a project to amsterdam i think it was for one of the oil companies 
photographing their staff and but it, she didn't I don't think she particularly went out looking for that kind of work but she she she'd do a project if somebody asked her to and did she not really enjoy doing commercial work do you think or did she no, rise think, to the challenge I th well yeah I think I think she small projects yes I I I think I remember her saying to me, I don't know how you can work nine till five when somebody tells you to. She said, I can only work when, when I'm inspired. That's, I guess that's a true artist. And in the 1980s, you as a whole family moved down to London. Was it because your father had a job there, I assume? Well, um, my parents didn't fully move. Uh, my father's work moved to London. Um, and I guess he worked part of, most of the week in London. And then some, some weeks and weekends, my mother would come down. Uh, hence her London. Uh, and the main London contribution are the, the punks that she took at Camden and such like. What, what else did she do in London? And then she photographed um, <clears throat> the London streets in the 80s. <clears throat> so that we've got um, quite a large body of work um, which she's labelled London Expo, but um, we're calling youth culture. Um, so 80s West End mainly. So it's interesting, she's interested in a sort of nostalgia of the Sulphur Street, which was slowly disappearing during the time she was shooting. But also she's very up to date because she's photographing punks and youth culture. Do you think she was torn between these two ideas of, of nostalgia and, and trying to be represent the very modern? I don't know if she saw it in that way. I mean, I'd see it as that she 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 was a people. She was she loved observing people and people at people outdoors in the street on the beach, at a dog show, at a car rally. Uh, it was the it wasn't the cars and the traction engine rallies. It was the oddities of the people. And then she did a commission for the documentary photography archive about Manchester Airport. But funnily enough, I've never seen any of those pictures. Did they? That was done for um, the DPA, and it uh, there was a big exhibition at Manchester Library with, I think there's over five hundred pictures. So um, because she was commissioned to do that, that belongs to the DPA, and they have the copyright and they have the pictures. But they did um, a couple. I think probably about three or four years ago, they did an exhibition where they. They displayed most of those Manchester Airport uh, photographs. She was commissioned, I think, to go to Manchester Airport for three days. And Just three, three days? In three days, she photographed over 500 shots. Wow. I'm surprised that she surrendered the copyright to the DPA, because I've done a commission for them, and I managed to keep it. Well, as I understand, I have got... I have found um, a box of um, airport pictures, but as I understand... I, they, they were done for them. Mm -hmm. And now you've been looking after the estate since 2014. I, mean, I guess for you, it's, it's almost like a full-time job because there's so much it's interest. that way. There's so much interest in, in her work. So you've done many more books. There are many more exhibitions. What, what else do you have planned in years to come? Um, good question. I don't know. There, there is um, some exciting museum oh. interest, um, which I'd like to follow up uh, on. And, um, and who knows? I think we've done enough books for now. We've done, I think I've done um, five books since 2014. Um, and watch this space. And do you think your mother would be surprised at the level of interest in her work now? She'd probably be surprised at the level of my own personal interest. Now, <laughs> um, you asked me earlier about recognition. Did she get recognition in her lifetime? I don't think I've fully answered that question. Um, I, I think she did, and, and she did a number of exhibitions. Her work in her lifetime, albeit only half a dozen pictures, but did get into Tate Britain and did get into the Louvre in Paris. And... Um, uh, I'd like to try and get it to go a little bit further. We've had an exhibition in the south of France already on her French work, for, just from holidaying in the south of France. Um, and um, the, the Photographers' Gallery in London have been showing her work um, and, sh you know, she made that contact when she was living in London. Um, 
so I just I'd just like to continue her legacy and um, and hopefully hopefully get a little bit more recognition for her. And the responsibility for looking after her estate was this agreed with her before she died? Yeah, she gave me she gave me her work. Very good. I think um, in um, um, probably the last twenty years of her life, she struggled with her eyesight, um, and she did have operations, but it was it was never as it was never brilliant. Um, so, which was a shame. Otherwise, I think she'd have done a lot more for a lot longer. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Nan. Thank Delighted you. Delighted to have you here. Thank you very much.